Think about loving up, baby. So you freaking my mind around, yeah, yeah, baby, yeah. Yeah. See, all of my life, I just wanted to shine Be like Tony Montana, cause this whole world is mine yeah. They did me dirty, oh, they gon' switch sides Please don't stare in those lights long, cause you might go blind Banana, oh, no, no. so they think you might blind me Side, no, not in the daylight, though. No, dark. Come alive in the nighttime, yeah. No, no. I wanna show me your dark side, yeah. Come show me. Wanna show me your dark side, yeah. Welcome back to Stephen Sully's study. I'm here in uh, Crayford at Nemesis Gym. Just had a hard grueling session with this man to, to, the, to the right of me, uh, Bradley Superskeet. Thank you, mate, for coming, no coming aboard. No worries, Steve. Um, pro boxer, current uh, British outright winner yeah. of the title and many other belts as well. Yeah. Um, and also has his own brand. He's, he's now an entrepreneur as well. Um, super fit boxing. That's correct, yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming on the podcast, Brad. No worries, Steve. Cool. Good to be here. Um, so I've known you for, for some time now. I think I got to know you when you was at the iBox gym or, or at the iBox gym, training with you. Um, and yeah, I've seen your journey progress, progress, yeah. progress. Actually, I'm going to change that. I think I actually got to know you slightly when you was at Kettles, I think. Kettles, that's yeah. correct, yeah. Um, and I got to know you because of Sam Webb. That's I was, correct. I was sponsoring him and um, I got to know Sam at Bromley and Downham, uh, amateur club. Amateur gym, and yeah. He didn't know this at the time, but he gave me a lot of inspiration. When I was like 13, 14 years of age, yeah. I used to look at this guy and I was so intimidated by him, <laughs> not because I felt he was ever going to do anything bad to me or he, or he was a nice person, but I was just so young yeah. and he was a few years older and I used to watch him hit the bag or hit the pads. And it, it was almost like this guy is a machine. He's savage. Yeah. And I just get a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah. And anyway, when I started working for myself I wanted to reach back out to him and say do you know what you never really said too much to me because yeah. you was doing your thing but I want to let you know you gave me inspiration and then when I started seeing you I was like I got the same sort of thing that's it yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's good to have uh, the same sort of feeling when you say with Sam like when I turned pro Sam was in the gym and he just won the British title so to be in the gym with a British champion and and to look at the belt and, and see that and then just opened my eyes to think, yeah. I'm training with a British champion. And it gave me that sort of edge when I, I was just starting out my career, like, and to go to other gyms sparring and that, and Sam would come and watch, I'd it'd give me that extra, like, 10% knowing, yeah. like, a British champion's with me in my camp. So yeah. I, can, I can relate to what you're saying with that, looking at someone and then building you up, definitely, yeah. yeah. So um, when you was younger, yeah. I mean, was it always something you wanted to get into? I've seen uh, short documentaries on yeah. um, uh, Box Nation and things. Yeah. And um, I remember hearing your mum, I think your sister as well. That's it, yeah. Uh, all, all talking about how you used to be very active <laughs> when you were younger and then imitated walking in and, That's you it, know, yeah. holding up a belt and stuff. But was it always ingrained into you? You wanted to be a fighter? Yeah, well, it was. Um, my dad, he worked for a guy called Sid Khan who runs the Elseworld Amateur Boxing Club who, who I started with. I've, he's got two, two boys who I, who I grew up with and from a young age. So when I was like seven, I used to go like Saturday, my, used to go to work with my dad down the garage. He used to be a mechanic working down the garage with Sid and his boys used to go to the gym obviously. <coughs> and I always used to be like, mom, mom, can I go? Can I go? She'd never like want me to go. But yeah, when I got to about seven, um, I think she finally let me go. Like, and then I started training at the gym and it was like, I just, yeah, I can't remember wanting to do nothing else but box. So I, yeah, from, from that day, all, I, all I've really known is boxing. That's all, that's all I wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, some people get into like business for the first time because they want to maybe make a lot of money. They want to provide for their family. Yeah. Maybe they've got something to prove to the teachers or to, to anybody else. Yeah. But was it because of fighting? Was it because of, I don't know, like you saw other people who were like making loads of money or yeah. turning themselves into a brand? I mean, it, or was it just for the sheer sake of fighting? Yeah, I just, yeah, I just like that. In, I didn't really know about like the money side of things and everything i just just loved like the, the fighting and yeah. the boxing and yeah just I, I loved it i just it was just being in the gym seeing all like different fighters and just training sparring i just loved being around the gym loved the crack it was it was good like it was it was a good vibe a good buzz 
and uh, yeah, I used to go out and watch the shows and see people boxing and, and winning and doing well. And I just be, used to be like, yeah, I want to do that then. Yeah. I, like, I, I remember like watching Prince Nazim, like he was my idol. Like he was the man to me, like, he was the best of the best. I used to like watch his fights and yeah. And that's when the I used to like, him, yeah, I used, I used to always say like, oh, I want to yeah. do that one day, like seeing big <laughs> arenas. F- 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 like full up to the brim. Have you ever passing. attempted the back, fl- uh, the front the flip, flip uh, over? A few times, <laughs> <laughs> a few times, but yeah, not not in my career, just in the gym when no yeah. one was watching. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like yeah, he like, was a big inspiration to me watching him grow up. And yeah, then yeah, I just always used to think, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be on the telly. I want to do that. Yeah, good stuff. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm doing like a three-part um, episode. So yeah. I've done it with Mel Dean. That's going to come out next week. He's an uh, ex-Harlequins, Wasp and Ireland rugby player, cool. professional. Yeah. Trained some, some top people currently. Really nice guy. Cool. Uh, put me through some horrible <laughs> training. Then with yourself, a current pro boxer. Yep. And uh, also put me through a really <laughs> horrible training session and beat me up as far in. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and uh, I'm only joking. Um, and then also another uh, an athlete next week, I'm going to go to the track. Really? And, um, and I wanted to do a little bit of a study yeah. of what makes you all very similar as far yeah. as my mindset's concerned and that yeah. will to win. And even when you have little challenges, setbacks, yeah. what makes you all quite similar how you get off, off the floor almost and yeah. then carry on and go and achieve certain things whether that's in the ring or on the track or on yeah. the rugby pitch or let's say in business or whatever else but then also looking at how you guys train yeah. and what slightly makes you like different like obviously yeah. typically a rugby player is massive yeah. you know very dense very very strong but whereas a boxer someone like yourself is very very sort of uh, nimble athletic yeah. and, and things like that um so yeah first of all like as an athlete then, yeah. kind of, what does it take to have that winner's mindset and that determination, do you think? With, with I think, any athlete boxing, rugby, football, whatever, athletics, I think that drive and that, that winning, I think that's to be an athlete, you've got to have that something, that, that desire to win and to be the number one and to be the best you can, I think, in, in any sport, in anything you do, even in life, yep. like, to, to be successful in work, to, you want to, you want to get to that number one spot. You want to be successful. I think that's just in you. I think that's just that's just in you, and it takes something to maybe to get out of you. Some people might lack that and need that push to get that out of someone. But I think athletes and that are just that they've got that to, to get into like a professional sport, so to speak. I think it's it's in you. It's yeah. deep inside you and. That drive is, yeah, I think you're born with it, really. I think yeah. you're born with it. Yeah, you want to better yourself and, course, and, and yeah. achieve some big things in your life. Yeah. Um, I don't know who's, who's, who said it before, but I've heard a few people say, like, life is never a rehearsal. You've got one shot at it, That's and you it. can either kind of waste it, yeah. or you can go after all your goals, aspirations, and visions, That's and, it. you know, really get be, become the best version of yeah. you. And I, I, I definitely noticed that with you, because we were just speaking before we started recording that, yeah. When you won your British uh, title, yeah. it was it wasn't about the money. Yeah, it wasn't about really anything else, bar winning that thing outright, which is behind us. That's it. And I remember. So for people that don't know, to to get a British title, yeah. well, first of all, what is a British title for people that don't actually know what it is? Uh, the history goes back, back many, many, many years, and it's it's like a prestigious belt in boxing. It's the Lord Lonsdale belt, and it's, it's it goes back to Henry Cooper. It goes back probably before them times and <coughs> it's been around boxing many many years and and to to be a british champion is is a big big thing in boxing and not just to be a british champion to win the belt and defend it three times to to have the honor of winning it outright and keeping it is that that is the Brit, that's the british title yeah and um i i said I, I noticed that when you had won it yeah you defended it twice that's it you had to go on for a third time in order to win it outright yeah and i was a bit shocked but at the same time i was thinking go on brad like <laughs> he's really determined here four weeks after you you defended it for the second time so yeah. you've just literally finished the fight yeah. you're back in there to defend it to win it outright and you even said you took less money for it so the, you, that demonstrated that you wanted to go out there and just you know there was a stamp of approval that you are the real deal when it comes down to the British, that's British it. title. Domestically, that's it. When you when when you win the British title, you're number one. When you win it outright, you you 
your domestic level you've gone past you've like so to speak in a computer game you clocked it yeah you clocked it and that's what <laughs> i wanted to do to me to win the british title was one thing because there's many people who's won a british title and defended it once defended it twice and not got it outright my ambition and dream and desire was i didn't just want to win that british title i wanted to get them three defenses in and win it outright and like I say, I defended it once and defended it after the second defence. I knew I was one fight away from, from owning the belt. I've worked so hard to get and keep. And I, I literally, I, I remember I got out of the ring and there, there was an, I remember there being a show four or five weeks later and I was like, get me on that show. I want, I want to win this British title. And, and that's what happened. I, I got on the show and like I say, it wasn't about the money, but it wasn't about the money or nothing. I, I took less money for it and mm. I, I defended it for the third time. So for the people, so you've, uh, you, you know, you basically have this indoors now. And yes. It's, it's yours to keep. Yeah. And um, do you ever just go back to it sometimes, get it out and think, you know what, I can't believe this is mine or? It's, it's not it's been out for a while until today and just seeing it, like looking at it and I guess opening the, the case and, and it just gleaming, just staring at me, like it just, like sometimes I like, just, like today I looked at it and then where I've like, took a bit of a break, I've, I've not really been around boxing and, and, and done my tra training myself. I've, I've opened the case today and like felt a bit emotional. Like, think, wow, look at this! Like, look what I've achieved, and it's it's inspired me even now today. Like sitting looking at, like, it's, it's like I've achieved something so good in boxing and yeah. it's so great, mate. Even in life, it's made me feel good, and yeah, it's it's a dream come true. Yeah, it's amazing. So, um, I know you're you're you've taken a bit of a break. Yeah. Um, when are you? maybe considering getting back out there because I've definitely missed watching you and yeah. uh, I, you know it, it doesn't feel the same if you're not if you're not fighting uh, thank you um, yeah I just think um, I just needed after after my last fight um, taking that defeat I just think I needed to take take some time off and to just recharge my batteries and and just get that get that drive back get that urge back again and uh, yeah it's coming it's there it's there it's coming so I'd like to get one maybe two in before the end of the year I'll be back and then really start the new, the new year and, and kick on and go and, and succeed and, and get them out, like reach them and that ambition, <coughs> what I want to become European, then fight for a world title. Yeah, amazing. Um, I think it's a good, a bit of a life lesson, which is like, sometimes when you're immersed in whatever you're doing, boxing, yeah. running a business, even family life, I've become a, a new dad in yeah. the last, uh, eight months with my little one. I know you can relate to it because you've yeah. got a little girl at nine years of age. Yeah. And um, sometimes life, it, it just feels like it's on top of you too much. Yeah. And every so often you need to step back. The person who actually um, mentors me for my podcast, a guy called Rob Moore, yeah. he's got um, a podcast called The Disruptive Entrepreneur. It's very good if you haven't yeah. listened to it. He's got two and a half million subscribers doing very, very, very well. Cool. And sometimes he says, Rather than work in your business, you yeah. need to step out and work on your business. And yeah, what he means by that is reflect on your career, reflect yeah. on your business, reflect on your family and think, okay, how can I tweak a couple of little yeah. things? Because if you're in it day in, day out, which serves a purpose and it's yeah. good, so you understand what you're doing, but sometimes you become a victim of your own success. So yeah. I think what you've done is a very, very smart move. And yeah. also the only person who knows your body is you. Exactly, yeah. And I can definitely relate to that. Like of right took some time off and needed to reflect a few things happen in my life in my personal life away mm. from boxing and and maybe got caught up with with my boxing and I definitely can relate to that like that, taking that step back and having some me time and some family time and uh, and and just to to recharge and, and and look at the bigger picture and I yeah I can really relate to that so yeah that's that's, that's a good yeah. way of looking at it yeah um I'm not going to go into it, but I'm just yeah. going to touch on what you just said there. Like a lot of people would see yourself, they see anyone who's doing really, really well in their in their career. Yeah. I think, oh well, all they do is train, eat, you yeah. know, and then and then that's it. And they're getting there, and they have a fight, and they get paid loads of money, and they get all this concentration on them. But we spoke behind the scenes about you know challenges. So yeah. how how as a fighter or anyone who wants to bet themselves, yeah. what advice would you give someone like? dealing with those emotions, yeah. the, the, the things that happen in your life, but you still got to push on. Is there any bit of advice that you've got? Yeah, just, I'd say I've dealt with it myself. I've had, I've had personal problems going on with family and, and, and things. And I, I think just to, you've, 
one the main thing is to speak and to talk about it there's like don't bottle it in don't hold it in and, and have a good team around you that's it you've got to have a good base around you a good unit like and that, that's like i'm lucky i've got that i've got good friends good family good people to, to talk to and that is the main thing i'd say just you're not on your own sort of thing there's 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 a lot of people maybe f think they're on their own and 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 i don't know like me being a being a boxer I mean, a, a man and maybe think like oh just don't just bottle it in and ah, it's all right put it yeah. to the back and it's not you wake up every day and it's still got still that same problem there and it's niggling you and you go on so i'd definitely i'd, I'd be to pick up the phone get go out talk talk to someone people there's always someone there to listen and you've got to have a good unit a good base a, a good team around you and <coughs> Everyone's got that. Everyone's got that. That one friend, that one family member you can have a good old chat to, and that, that's what I'd say. Just yeah, talk to someone and make your problem their problem, so to speak. And and it's not really a problem when you look at the bigger picture. It's not a problem. What what you might be going through is it can get dealt with, and it's not the end of the world. And just to just to be positive and and have that belief. And yeah, it's it's like you say you, you can wake up and go one way or the other. Just just be positive and. If you wake up with a negative vibe, a negative thought, just 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 change that mindset. Just wake up and be positive, and and go about things the the, the right way and the positive way. And and that's all I done. Is just just be positive about things. Take take some time away, talk about it, and yeah, just reflect. And yeah. And now look, I'm, I'm I've, I've started super fit boxing. I've, I've took some time away from boxing. I've I've had some family time, and I I feel I feel great. I feel really good, and I I can't wait to get back in the ring myself now. Yeah. Um, how important do you think, I know it's obviously very important yeah. as a boxer and an athlete, especially at the level you're at and yeah. where you're going to get to, but for just a general person or someone maybe not in sport, yeah. how important is it just to train to get out that stress, the challenges, the things when you feel like life is against you a little bit? Yeah. How important do you think it is to get a bit of training and get a bit of blood, sweat and tears out there and um, to help you get over it? Definitely training, I'd say, is, is one of the best things what, what can help. Not just boxing, any any means of training. Listen, you can just go for a walk, a walk around your park, just clear your head and just get out there and do something. Be active and and like today we've we've got we we've, we've, we've woke up in the morning, we've, we've had a good session and I feel good. Like the day you start the day so good. Mm. Or if you 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 can't do it in the morning, you have a, you have a, your day. You go about your family life. You go about your work life. <coughs> At the end of the day, you get in the gym or go for a walk, do a run, do a session. You end the day on a high, on a buzz, and training is a big part of it. And and I'd I'd recommend it to anyone. You ain't listen. I box. I ain't, you ain't got to go in the gym and do do boxing. Like I say, you can go for a walk, go for a run, go for a swim. Yeah. And any means of training, that is that feel good factor and feel good about yourself and. That, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I personally feel that you know my, my day is never going to be as good as it could be if I don't don't get up early and do a bit of uh, a training session. Yeah. And you know what? I come up with the best ideas when I'm training, especially when I'm running. Yeah, I haven't taken up like the typical um, description of what people call meditation. Yeah, but I regard my own meditations when I run. Yeah, when I sometimes at night as well, you go for a run a little that's bit it. dark put your headphones on and I'm constantly thinking, thinking and yeah. I'm com coming up with solutions to kind of challenges, yeah. I'm coming up with brand new ideas and anything that's niggling at me, it might still be there after the run, but it's, it, it seems like to fall away a little you bit. Fall away, yeah. And I just, I, just think, I just think it's so important. I, I think if you're going to become a success in business or anything that you're yeah. going to do, training has to be a fundamental rule that you have to do it's at least there. four or five, maybe six times a week. It's up there, definitely. I make you right. Yeah. Um, also, i done a podcast episode on my own, which was invest into a good personal trainer because yeah. a good personal trainer is not someone just trains you in the gym or yeah. gives you nutritional advice and stuff like that. Yeah. But they're a bit like a mentor. Course, so yeah. in your life, you know, the importance of having good people around you in a team yeah. is it must be also important for your career and also your, your well-being. Yeah, definitely. To have, to, like I say, go back to having that, that, that person to pick up the phone to, to, to meet up with. If For me, boxing, going in the gym, I've got training, I've got trainers there, people there. To, that's, that's what it's all about, having that, that right team around you. And yeah, investing, like I say, investing in a personal trainer. You can come in the gym, you can tr have a chat, do your session and talk about your general day life and, yeah. and it just that feel good factor, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So um, you mentioned about super fit boxing, yep. which is your own brand. Yep. What I love is you've you've <laughs> made that transition with your your 
your boxing brand into your, your business brand. Yeah. So you're actually uh, current athlete, but you're also going into the, the world of, of business. That's it, yeah. So if, um, if people want to get a session in with you or find yeah. out a bit more about it, where can they find you on that? I'm on Instagram, at superfitboxing. Um, yeah, you can, you can see all the information there. You can send me a message, email, phone me and my numbers and that on there. So they can get, get in contact with me and, and yeah, give them all the information they, that's needed. And what's the typical stuff you do? I know we, we trained earlier, but yeah. is it is it is it just boxing or do you offer it other stuff? Yeah, I don't I don't want it to just people get off put by <laughs> boxing because people think, oh it's boxing, they're gonna get in there and get get beat beat up or whatever. But it's it's boxing training and fitness. Um it's it's for it's for all people, men, women, kids, I do it all and it's it's my concept of it it goes hand in hand i'm a, I'm a professional boxer so it is boxing training um but listen i wherever you feel comfortable with if you've got goals what you want to achieve and targets you want to hit i'll help you do that i'll yeah, help you do amazing. that yeah um i've interviewed a, f a few um, athletes now yeah. um either still currently an athlete or making that tr transition out um Anton Ferdinand was one that was released two weeks ago and he's still in an orange whether he's going to play another season or two. A yeah. uh, couple of factors why he may consider packing it in, but there's also a couple of factors why he should remain. Yeah. Still loves doing it, still very fit, fit. But also he's thinking about the future, about yeah. how can he have his own business or how can he make an impact on the younger generation yeah. coming up. Um, so is that one of the reasons why you started up your own your own brand because not that you're packing it in because yeah. i know you're, you're going to carry on but yeah. have you got it in the back of your mind thinking i'm now 30 31 yeah um, 30, i'll take 30, 30, <laughs> no, 30. 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you're you're thinking right in five years time six years time where do i want to be and where do i want my own brand to be exactly um we, we've we spoke about it before when we was training um, boxing is very much like snakes and lag ladders, so to speak, as you put it. One minute you could be top of, top of the tree, the next minute you're down, down at the bottom and it's literally that. And listen, I'm, I'm 31 years old now. I've had 31 fights. Um, I, I know... 31 I'm, fights? I didn't realise that. Yeah. That's a lot. 31 fights yeah. now. So I'm at the back end of my career. I, I've, I've achieved great things and I wouldn't say my career's coming to an end because for me, after this break, it feels like it's just starting again. So it's a fresh start, but I'm coming to the back end of my career. So there's life after boxing. I've got a family to provide for. I've got like, I've got to live my life. So boxing isn't always going to be there. And it's in, in this time off, I've, I've had to assess that and realize that I can, I can think of life after boxing. And this goes hand in hand. So I thought training people and, and doing the super fit boxing and, that that's what I know, so that's what I'll be doing. So I've, I've I've started this up, and it's going really really well. And it's something that I will be carrying on after after my career has finished, and mm. expanding it, making it bigger, and hopefully one day get my own gym and and my own facilities to train people. So yeah, yeah that's what I, I want to look at the bigger picture after. I can expand it and can get into other things, nutrition things like have a kit like a kitchen, and it can go on and on and on. Yeah. So. That's my mindset now to think boxing is, is my job and, and that's what I'll be doing. But there's life after boxing and investing in it now. So, so when I stop, I can get, get going. Yeah, I, um, I mentioned as well earlier that I was at an event last night yep. uh, for my friend. It's called Shout Out to Be and Alfie. He lo launched uh, uh, something last night and it was cool. a really good event. And um, there was a football agent there. Yeah. And he, we was having a general conversation and I'm always intrigued about, you know, talking about the athletes and stuff because yeah. I love what, you know, f I think footballers are phenomenal. I, I actually love the fact they're on a lot of money, <laughs> but then I always get intrigued about what happens after that. When yeah. the lights turn off, as far as the stadiums are not in it no more, exactly what happens, he says, a lot of them, yeah. sadly, yeah. because of poor financial education, yeah. poor people, as in, not the right people around them yep. because they're sapping them of That's it. their energy, their money, yep. they're advising them badly. And then suddenly they turn to drink drugs, some of them, yep. um, they become abusive, they have divorces which just factor into the problems into their life. Yeah. And he said one of the things that he's doing is not just being a football agent, but he's becoming a financial advisor for a lot of them, but yeah. educating them, yeah. financial education. That's it. And I think that 
sometimes the most dangerous place to be is when you're at a high yeah. because you think you're almost untouchable. I went for it myself when I was yeah. a bit younger. I was fairly good at what I was doing. Yeah. I felt like I was a bit un, un, untouchable as far as like, you know, enough, you know, I'm always yeah. going to be at this high, but then yeah. markets change, legislation yeah. changes. Yeah. And if you don't stay one step ahead of it, yeah. you find yourself underneath it. It's like oh, a surfer yeah. riding a wave and suddenly this bigger wave comes nice. and you don't anticipate it and you get wiped out. That's it. Yeah. And it kind of slightly happened to me a little bit. Yeah. And the good thing is I've never hit rock bottom, but sometimes when you feel like you're yeah. at rock bottom, it's a good place because you get to review everything and think you know what the only way is up now yeah but on the second round as i'm coming back round, i'm never going to make the same mistakes that's it yeah so with boxing it's kind of like football because you've got everyone throwing all this yeah. praise at you you've got the media endorsements you yeah. won titles money yeah i mean there must be other like women even trying to come, <laughs> come at you and stuff like that. all these yeah. distractions it's important to have that education you would feel that's for it. for later on in your yeah. life and a lot not just me a lot of boxers have been through it um and when you're on a high like you say you've got all these things you've got people people want to be around you you've got you're living the life you're, you're winning fights you're, you're on telly you're, you're doing this you're doing that like you can earn good money at that, that high level and and you do feel you feel like i'm unstoppable I, i'm the man no one's beating me I, I, this is going to last forever and listen you take your eye off the ball and that that one slip up that one that one loss you, you like you say you can be at rock bottom and it's the, the the people around you start dwindling off and and you you ain't earning the same money you was earning and it's so easy to to fall off and like you say you can you're at that low and get into drink drugs like gambling trying to chase that you 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 that you, euphoria you yeah you, that. you you you're trying to live that life that isn't isn't the life what's there if you know what I mean like you're trying to keep up an image and uh it's like social media so you, you you'll be you'll be winning fights you'll be here there and everyone posting pictures and then once you're once you slipped off and you've got to try and chase that and keep keep going and keep that going and and it's not there so I can relate to to to, to, to footballers boxers other sportsmen who's been there and 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 dropped off and mm. It's, it's, it happens. It's, it's a known fact. It's, it's happened, and it's still happening to today. So, I think it's 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 one of them things what have to be have to be looked at. And it goes back to to, to having the, the the right unit and right team ar around you. And like you say, looking ahead at f financial advisors getting into things, not just relying on your sole income of 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 IME boxing. There's other things to branch off and and do and like say investments, property, other things going on. And that's definitely a stage I'm at now where I'll be, I'll be looking at and, and there's life after, after me boxing. Yeah, and I think, um, I know we spoke about uh, social media and, and the internet can be a bit of a, a crazy paradox yeah. between really good and then also can, you can get drawn into all kinds of crazy stuff. And I've, I've heard read, read papers and heard stories about yeah. even people harming their self committing suicide yeah. because they, they become depressed. Yeah. But for the good side of it, unlike back in the day, you've got podcasts, you've yeah. got books, you've got mentors on there, you've got YouTube uh, channels where yeah. you can actually get inspired, get educated and, and get yourself taught in, a, in, a, in an area or, or, a, or a, a sector yeah. where then you can start making a bit of a business. I mean, f for me, I, um, I was on a friend's yacht years yeah. ago, 2016, and I was quizzing him. He's yeah. massive into property, he got the largest private care homes in the country, and yeah. he said, why don't you just do what I do, get into property and start yeah. cash flowing it? And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do that, yeah. but I'm not gonna do the stupid thing, which is throw myself head first into it and expect I'm gonna turn myself into this guy. Yeah. I'm gonna get back in the classroom. That's so it. I literally went to an academy called Progressive Property, yep. that's where I re met Rob Moore, yep. and sat in a classroom for, um, I think it was like a three day event. Yeah. Then I signed up to a mentorship. So yeah. I've got accountability now with a mentor. Yeah. He was giving me homework every single month. And when I went back there, he, he would sit down with me for an hour and said, okay, have you done this? What I told you to do, yeah. why not? And he would put me under pressure like and I needed school, it. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that uh, accountability, yeah. uh, mentorship, that guidance, that wisdom, yeah. that knowledge is so powerful. And now off the back end of it, I started building some properties because okay. I've gone through the classroom. Yeah. So that continue learning in no matter what field you're in, That's that it. must be so important That's as it. well. And, and I no, mean, you no even must hard. learn even new little moves or new techniques, yeah. you know, and where you rest, nutrition, you know, 
everything. They sort of continue, continue to learn, basically. There's every day you can learn something new. Every day of your life you can learn something new. And that's it. That's, I, I make, make you right. You can, you can, you can never stop learning. You can never, ever stop learning. Like, in life, in boxing, in, in anything you do, there's always knowledge out there. Someone knows something and there's always something to learn. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, and on that note, I mean, I, I, I was one of these kids that when I got out of school, I hated school. <laughs> I really <laughs> hated it. And I got out of it and I, it was almost like a, a breath of fresh air thinking, I, I'm never going to go back there. But actually, that inner talk was actually really bad advice because I resented and I was, um, I was bitter about doing anything that involved education or reading. But yeah. actually, the best advice that you can ever receive is continue learning and put yourself, not necessarily back in a classroom, yeah. but... Get around people that know a little bit more about you or have achieved certain things and just get as much information as you can because you never know where it's going to serve exactly, you. Yeah. And with you now making that transition slightly, yeah. still fighting and going yeah. after big goals, but that slight transition into being an entrepreneur now, I think yeah. is such an important thing. Thank you. So your, your brand, the, yeah. the Super Super Ski, how come yeah. you come up with super ski because what i like uh, about it i'm my at my core i'm yeah. a salesperson yeah no matter whether i'm looking after my son yeah i have to be a good salesperson with my son because yeah. it's effective communication that's what sales is yeah running companies doing actually actually selling a product or a service to someone property yeah. it's all sales yeah um what we talk about in sales is affirmations and yeah. you say i am the very best at this thing and you yeah. keep on ingraining it into yourself and what i love about super bradley <laughs> ski is that affirmation, that incantation. Yeah. But how come you come up with that? Um, I can't take the credit for it. I, it, it was my power. I, it was my power. And uh, I was turning pro. And I, you know, in pro boxing, you, you got to have your name and, and, and what, what stands out. And um, we, was going, we was going for all these names. And I was like, no, no, no. Then he just, he just come out of it like, super ski. You're super ski. And then, yeah. yeah, it just stuck. And then, Obviously, like the, 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 the Superman thing, the Superman logo, I got a logo done and, and, and changed it up a bit and made it my own and it just stuck. So yeah, Bradley Super Ski was me and that's, that's what everyone knows me as, that's, that's my boxing name and it's just stuck. And then when, when I've come around to, to branding my, my training, I uh, thought, I was just thinking, what, what, what can I name it? And then it was, I can't take the credit for it again, it was my sister. So it's like, well, it's super fit. You're, you're training people, yeah. you're getting people fit. Like, you're super ski, super fit. So yeah, I just kept, kept the same brand and it goes hand in hand. Um, I'm still active, I'm still boxing and, and literally Bradley super ski and super fit boxing goes hand in hand. So nice. yeah, I think it, I think it, it works well and, it, and it's a good selling, selling thing and, it, and, it, and it's, yeah, it's going really well. Yeah, amazing. Because you, then you can transition it into like, um, uh, s super uh, nutrition exactly or like that. there you go yeah. or s super sports therapy or anything always, like that always always thinking thinking ahead that's and that's that's what i'm doing now and that's that's like even today meeting you and, and speaking to you and, and like it's always inspiring and and like i say that's what the, the main thing in life is talk and and meet new people and and talk and have chats and and that's that's what it's all about yeah um and on the uh, Speaking about that, it's, um, I was having the same conversation with Anton about um, some footballers are just footballers yeah. and then they're kind of retired, you never hear about them again. And then another people like David Beckham, for example, is a brand. Exactly. And there's a, there's a bit of a difference between being a good footballer and becoming a household name and a brand because yeah. that brand can go into other things. There you go. Rio, Rio Ferdinand, his brother, has obviously done some incredible stuff. Yeah. And I think it's so important. I think it's a very smart move that you've kind of embodied that brand and now you can put it into other things. Yep. Mayweather is a good money example. Team. To, yeah, yeah, money team. Yeah, money team. Yeah. I think it's... I mean, he can go into pretty much any field now and people will recognise yep. that household name and they'll, they'll straight away think it's a yep. uh, success anyway. Exactly. As, uh, and like you see, you can go anywhere in the world, they see TMT and they, they know it's the money team and they know it's, it's, it's Mayweather. So yeah. that's super fit. Like, yeah. Hopefully it can be like Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> so I trained with uh, Meldin last week, the rugby yep. player. I trained with you earlier, done a bit of sparring, yep. pads for circuit. Uh, what would you actually say would make you slightly different as far as your training train train is concerned yeah. to a rugby player? What would what would you think is like some of the main differences? I think um, and any training cardio is a, a big thing and and being fit is is a big thing. But where's boxing's concerned, I think it's 
as, as we spar today and, and you box yourself, you know yourself, it's a mental thing and it's, it's, it's thinking you've always got to be a step ahead and if, if you, you slip the wrong way, you're going to get caught, you slip that way. So you've always got to think what's coming back. And I think what makes, what makes my training different, I always look at and try to teach to, to think ahead think of the next the, the next move and that like chess exactly there you go boxing and chess they say is is very similar and that's yeah. that's what i believe and uh, when you when you've been fighting yeah. whether that be sparring or whether that would be actually in a real fight yeah uh, we were saying earlier mate think how you, you're like you're 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 phen phenomenal in comparison yeah. to me because i was saying to you like it's almost like you know exactly where I'm going to be. You yeah. know, your reactions are just there. And with all due respect, you're not even fighting fit at the moment. Yeah. So imagine what you're going to be like yeah. in, in August or September when you are fighting. But then you've got other people. Yeah. And it's almost, in my mind, it's almost hard for me to even fathom yeah. how good they are, like Mayweather's, like exactly. that split second yeah. where they can adjust, they can block, they can throw back, and they can do some real damage. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, who has been some of the best people you've been around you've either sparred against or fought? Yeah. Um, Sparring, I've, I've I picked up a lot of knowledge being around um, Adam Booth and and his team, and he he I was sparring with Andy Lee, and uh, he was a world champion. Irish, yeah. yeah. He was he was Southport. Well, he was fight, Southport, yeah. He was fighting for a world title, and I was, I was train in a training camp with him, sparring with him, and then he won the world title, and we've done some some more work, and being around like a, a world champion in a, in that camp in that setup, and. The, the knowledge and, and seeing things and like I say, I always ask questions, oh, this, that, and being around that and just, and just watching and absorbing it all in, that, that was a great like, inspiration and, and a proud moment to be a part of that, that team and, and be around them. To, mm. I think I, I, learned, I learned a lot from, from being around them. Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember, but years ago, I went down to watch Sam Webb um, spa George Groves. Yeah. And you was there and I think you had yeah. a few rounds with him. Yeah. And um, I've always, I always liked the way George Groves uh, fought. Yeah. Explosive. Um, he's always in yeah, you know, he's big, big, fights, big, yeah. big drama fights, yeah. which is always very entertaining for boxing fans, people like me. Yeah. Um, but I remember watching you spar with him and what was that like sparring someone like, you know, because I think you were only a few fights in at that yeah. point. Yeah. It was, again, like to get sparring with, with someone and George was obviously I think he was British, British he? champion at the time and he, he was moving on to bigger and better things and I've been around George and a, lo a long time I know George well uh, through the amateur scene and and we, we've, we've shared rooms away when we boxed away for England and seeing him do well as a <coughs> pro looking up to him and um, yeah when I'd say in, in, in training and in boxing in, if in any sport if you can get get time with someone that step ahead of you just get get in and, and take as much knowledge and 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 look up to them as best as you can because it, it, it will help definitely yeah. help we um we spoke as well uh, again coining that phrase of snakes and ladders in boxing yeah. i think in life it can be like that but yeah. it seems more more brutal in boxing yeah. unlike football like you know man united could lose two or three games on the trot yeah it's very very unlikely that all the team is going to get sacked i know the managers do occasionally yeah. but Let's, let's, let's be fair, if they get sacked, they're gonna get, all get paid out. Exactly. And it's kind of like, you know, a bit of sweet almost. Yeah. But with boxing, not only can you lose your endorsements, you can lose your pay, you yeah. lose your obviously, but it almost goes, goes very, very, you become isolated. Yeah. You know, um, and then you look at some people that you've beaten yeah. or that you know you can beat or either going for European fights world titles and it's, yeah. it must get very very frustrating so there was a time when you was going to fight world champion which was uh, Jeff Horn yeah correct yeah he beat Manny Pacquiao yeah so to put things into light your weight fighting yeah. weight at the time was what weight what weight yeah so for people that don't know so boxing so much who's yeah. in that category uh you've got the world champions now are Errol Spence uh Terence Crawford um Kelbrook. Keith Keith Furman, Kelbrook uh, lost to Errol Spence, so he's he's but he's yeah, world uh, level. Yeah. Um, Manny May Pacquiao, Mayweather would have been Mayweather, Keith Furman. They they're the champions at the time, but yeah, they there's some great great Amir Khan's well away. Um, so yeah, there's some great names to and to be amongst them names. At one stage in my career, I was ranked number three with the WBO, and like I say, I was in talks with Jeff Horn to to you fight for the yeah, world basically title. Yeah, basically signed the contract yeah, almost. Yeah, the fight got agreed. I got 
but everything was agreed and I'd, I'd signed everything I had to sign and we was just waiting back for the, the, the okay and, and then to announce the fight. It was even going back, it was even in the bookies, like the, the Australian press had announced it was me who was fighting and all of a sudden it was like they just got cold feet and shut the door on it. So Why do you think that is? Money I, or, I don't, or fear? I don't or? think, listen, he, he was a great champion, he beat Manny Pacquiao. I, I don't, him personally, I don't think it was it was fear. He would probably fight anyone. Any fight would fight anyone. But I just think his team looked at it and looked at me, my style, and and it, I was all wrong for him. And they, I, I just believe they didn't want the fight. They they knew I was an awkward fighter. They knew I, w I was hungry. I was coming to win, and they didn't want the fight. They just beat Manny Pacquiao. They need they wanted a, a so to speak an easy first defence and then they took the money fight, he boxed, he boxed Terence Crawford, so he, he got a big money fight, so I think they just looked at the fight and thought, I don't, I don't want that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's one of them, it happens yeah. in boxing, and yeah. it, it's, it's one of them, I could be sitting here now, I've been a world champion, but who, it's, it's, things happen for a reason, I believe, um, bad and good, and, it, and it's the way you bounce back and come back from it, it wasn't meant to be at that time in my life, and, and yeah. career, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Because then there's also the other scenario with Sam uh, Eggleton that you beat. Yeah. Was that to beat win the uh, British title? Yeah, um, I went went and beat Sam Eggleton. He was British champion at the time. Won the title off him, um, and then he he took a loss from me. Then he went on and boxed for the European title, and he he beat Paul Paulie Manlarge along the way, and who's been ex world champion. So he he took a loss, and then he lost his British title, and then went and won a European title and beat an ex world champion. So. Yeah. It, it happens in, in boxing and, and, in, and in life. It's yeah. just one of them. One minute you're up, one, one minute you're down. Yeah. So there's, um, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's healthy because, like we said earlier, some people will take that as they get depressed. Yeah. They will turn to certain uh, abusive substances exactly. or have bad relationships with people. There's other people like you, yeah. which I believe in my heart this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Taking time to reflect, think how you can adjust yeah. in everything that you're doing and thinking, right, if these people who I've beat or I know I can beat yeah. are at this level now, it's going to give me that fire that I need to come back. Yeah. And I've gone through my own challenges even this year, which I've never spoken about. And people yeah. looking at me would never, ever see, know that anything's happening. But behind yeah. the scenes, there's been some big challenges. Yeah. I've got through it and it's almost like whether you believe in God, whether you yeah. believe in bloody law of attraction, yeah. spirits or anything, something up there said to maybe both of us, right, put you for a challenge. That's it. I want to see how you're going to deal with that now. And go. I think when you come back out and you've, you're firing on all cylinders, I think that's when the pe people actually see the very, very best the, in you. That's it. And I'm excited for it. And talking now, is, it excites me to, 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 to know that's what I believe, that's what's going to happen. I believe like, that I took, took this time to reflect, took a loss, and the, the comeback is going to be so much better and yeah. sweeter, yeah. So we'll pull it out into the universe, U uh, European. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like to fight for the European title again and, and win the European title. And then my, my main goal, my main dream is to fight for and win a world title. I believe I can get there and, and I can do it. And would you like to give a rough estimate when that would happen in a year or two years time? I'd like, I'd like to, like I say, get, get, back, get back in the ring at the end of this year, have, have two or three fights and then next year crack on. I'd like to be fighting for the European title and then back end of the year, be all goes well, all winning, and, and I'd get my name back in the world mix and, and be fighting for, for a world title, definitely by the end of next year. Yeah, amazing. So just a couple more things then, then Brad. Um, what advice would you give anyone, first of all, getting into boxing? Yeah. Like, they're, you know, like okay, my, my son, at some point, I would like him to, to get into it. And yeah. I'm gonna give him my own interpretation my own view on it but yep. let's just say he was a bit older and he's ready to start boxing what yeah. is kind of the advice you could give to someone like him i'll just give him the advice is just don't be put off by it the main thing is getting in the gym and to and to do it and once you're in there in the gym and you're doing it, it it's in, it's enjoyable anyway anyone does boxing it's enjoyable they all they all enjoy it and once you're there doing it, I just always, I just always believe just hard work and dedication, and, and that's that's what you've got to put put into anything. Just train hard and dedicate yourself, and 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 you'll go you'll go a long way with it. Nice. I think uh, boxing, especially boxing, being a fighter, yeah. is a mindset that is transferable. So yeah. you can do it. I find in business, yeah. it's actually made 
I know certain people in business are really good at good at business, but yeah. when they when things get really tough, they get quite emotional about it and they yeah. lose their head. Yeah. And I think the reason that I'm sometimes I'm not as good as them at certain aspects, but one thing I feel I'm pretty good at okay. is dealing with emotional when the climate changes and it's all against you. Yeah. I feel I can hurt, hold my ner ner nerve yeah. pretty well, yeah. and I will think that down to to boxing. Would yeah. you say that boxing is giving you you know when punches have been in front of you, yeah. you hurt, you might even be on the floor. Yeah. It's giving you that inner strength to hold your nerve and that's emotion it. together and then come back out and do something definitely and that's it's it's, it's you got you got to hide if you're hurt you got to sh not show your hurt and it's so you got to hide that sort of thing and charlie beat says it to yeah. me all the time inspiring he said if you get hit yeah n no pain no emotion that's it that's and just it. keep them coming forward yeah you got you got it's you got to just like show them you're not hurt and then same in life you just, you, things ain't going your way don't show it just no emotion go, don't show it don't get caught up in it and next round could all swing round in your favor and, and and that's what it's all about so on that note what has been your best moment of your career you would say uh my, I've, I've had some good good times in my career but definitely winning the, the british title was it was a big big achievement for me and that that was like a boy, boyhood dream of mine to win it and then winning it outright was was another, another big big achievement for me and uh yeah there's been there's been some great great times i've had throughout my career and um yeah just there's, there's plenty more to come i'm looking forward to what's next and there's, there's plenty more good nights to come yeah and on the flip side of it maybe it might be a bit of a bit of uh, bit of pill to, to swallow but yeah. i want to ask you it what's been kind of maybe some of your toughest moments yeah. might, might not even be in your career but even yeah. just in life i mean what kind of a couple of challenges that stood out to you and thought whoa that was a quite a hairy moment but i got through it yeah the I went over to, to Bilbao and, and boxed for the European title and, and got beat. I was up against it. The, I was fighting the, 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 it was a vacant belt at the time, but the hometown hero, um, there, there was 15,000 people in the arena. There was, there was all against me and it, it really opened my eyes and, and I, I, got, I got beat. I got stopped in the second round in that fight and I, I really felt up against it. Like, and it was, it was in life, it's, it was it was one of them things I had to swallow and it, it was it wasn't the end of the world it was to me at the time but to come back and 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 to I'd, I'd love I'd love to fight again and I would I'd come back and and that was a, a like a bad time in my life and even going back and then I had to come back fight going back to my last fight I, I, I lost to, to a fighter I, sh I sh shouldn't have lost to really I was on the comeback I was rebuilding and and just things didn't go my way and that's that's when it was time to to take this this step back and and look at the bigger picture and, and to recharge and yeah so I pretty close together I've had two two losses close together and really been down about it really like it's it's, it's felt like it's, it's it felt like it was the end, so, so to speak. And because people a lot have, of people been, yeah. have said that a lot of people have, have, have said I've retired and and wrote me off and. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely not. It's, it's, this has made me. It's not. It's not the end of me. And when I come back, and I, I think there's going to be a lot of people who's going to want to make a name off themselves from from me, and they might think I'm on the slide. But I just make the message now to tell them this is where I'm going to be the most dangerous because this is I've, I've, I've stepped back and I've, I've looked at the bigger picture, and this is when I'll be the most dangerous. I feel hungry. I feel fresh again, and I, I feel this is the start of my career. Yeah. I love that when you just said this this made me and it's like y you reframe yeah. um what's happened to you i listen to a lot of podcasts yeah. i listen to a lot of read a lot of books and yeah. stuff like that I'm, I'm continually trying to get myself motivated educated and inspired by people yeah. there's a guy called ed mylet don't know if you heard of him he's a massive uh podcast influencer like yeah. a tony robbins type guy okay and he says something i want to get this right life happen doesn't happen to you it happens for you okay yeah and what you've gone through in the last couple of years yeah. is happening for you because yeah. you're about to come back out and i think there's going yeah. to be a super animal yeah. <laughs> is going to come from you and i yeah. think i think there's going to be some um some really good fights some Thank entertaining you. ones and i know that you're going to start you're going to be back up there winning and Thank i you, think yeah. um 
I think the second time round almost is oh, you're going to see the best Bradley ski out there. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man, you will do. You will do, man. <laughs> so you got this, uh, your, your boxing brand. They can find you yeah. on Instagram on Instagram. your personal personal page, which is Bradley Ski. At Bradley Ski is my my personal page. It's linked into to my my training page, but my super fit boxing page. So yeah, go yeah both both the same can find me at Bradley Ski. I'm on all social media platforms on Bradley Ski, but just the the training one is on Instagram, super fit boxing. Cool. I always leave my podcast, Brad, yep. with um, my catchphrase, which is be happy, yep. but never content. Be happy, but never content. I've cool. got my own interpretation of that. Yep. I've said it plenty of times on my episode, what, what reason why I say it. But if you were to, to describe or have your own interpretation of be happy, but never content, what would yep. that mean to you? I mean, obviously, be happy in yourself and how things are going. And but never content because there's always more to be happy about and always more to get there's always always there's always more to 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 achieve and always more to go and get so that's how i'd interpret yeah yeah that's so there's there's other levels there's other things to achieve at your life and Definitely. um life doesn't stop at just boxing it's yeah. it's the family it's you know it's your, your own businesses yeah. it's it's loads life travel you know yeah. there's so much stuff it's that you can do exactly and uh, that's basically the same interpretation i've got i want to say a uh, shout out to mimboso thank you very much for recording and, and being here as always and guy behind it always chris at the moment so thank mm -hmm. you very much for that uh brad thank you Cheers, for your bro. time mate thank you very really much, really appreciate thank it thank, thank you, you for the training session amazing anyone has got a bit of spare time obviously you want to invest in yourself the best investment you can make is definitely in yourself hit up bradley i mean it's very very rare that you get to train with a current a current athlete and someone that is a, an outright winner of a british uh, yeah. british belt i mean it really is amazing so thank you very thank much you. god Thanks bless your time, bro. cheers thank, thank you, you. Not in the daylight though, no dark. I'm alive in the night. Show me your dark side.